All right, so here's my completed immersion pyrometer. The business end is right there. That's a thermocouple. I'll put a link to the description where I got that. It's a piece of half inch conduit. Notched it, you know, pretty hard because the the thermocouple is significantly narrower than a half inch, so you need to give the conduit quite a bit of room to squeeze down. So you can see how I got that all notched in there and then a hose clamp to pull it tight. I got the the conduit itself just at Home Depot. I just asked the guy he was standing around, it's like, do you mind if I grab one of your pipe benders, you know, they had hanging up there for sale because I just need to put a bend in this thing. It's like, nah, go ahead. Running the wires internally, obviously. I uh, drilled a hole in the pipe to bring them out like that and, uh, you know, put a lot, fair amount of effort into deburring that hole so it's nice and smooth and not rubbing on the, the wires. These thermocouple wires are actually, the insulation is sort of that I don't know, Chinese finger trap stuff. So it's sort of that cloth stuff that just kind of slides along. I got a, uh, you know, a male type K thermocouple plug that I intended to use there, but these wires on this thermocouple are way too heavy for that to work. So I just pulled the pins out and screwed it in. And uh, that seems to be working. Here's the actual display unit. I guess you'd call this the actual thermometer, UT320A put a link in the description again on that. It's held onto the conduit by a, a bracket that I fabricated, just 3D printed it, put it together in Fusion 360. I'll put a link to the description on that. And I've got a fair amount of extra pipe hanging off the end just to make this thing easier to handle once I get some experience using it. I may or may not cut some of that off. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. So anyway, that is that. We're going to give it a test and see what's what. All right, so we've got a pot of water here on a high rolling boil. So theoretically we should look at 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's put her in and see what we get. So there you go. What do we have? 209 fluttering around a little bit. I guess that's close enough. I'm curious if this thing would be more accurate at, uh, you know, casting temperatures. I mean, I'm looking for this to be measuring 2,000 degrees plus, so I'm curious how accurate it is at this lower end of the range. But anyway, that's that. Hope you found this helpful. Take care.